My name is Elio guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I wanted to cover two uh, Android emulators that I personally use for not only MSL but just gaming in general on my computer if you're into phone games and hopefully you stumble across this video because maybe you play MSL or you're interested in just setting it up and playing a different game. But without further ado let's go ahead and get right into it. Alright, so I'm going to start off with the Nox player here because people are very, very familiar with Nox. Right before I begin the rest of this video though, I will tell you that I do use Nox just for performance. Like if I'm farming on a game like MSO, I just run Nox just to do farming. It doesn't have to look pretty because I'm just going to hit auto and let the game do whatever it does. And my Blue Sex player is set up differently to where that's quality. So when you when you guys see me play games and stuff of that nature, I'm actually using Blue Sex because not only am I running the game at a higher resolution, but normally the settings are just a lot more favorable for looking pretty. And I mean, it works fine, but if I'm not gonna see the game anyways, there's no point in me having it run as best as possible when I'm just gonna hit auto and just close the tab out. But right before we begin with the Nox player setup what I want you guys to do especially if you're on a Windows computer which I obviously hope you are is go into here to your start menu and then type in dxdag even though I can't type and this should pop up here go ahead and hit enter and then a box should pop up wherever that is at did I do this wrong maybe I did it wrong I have to actually click it oof but anyways uh, you hit that box and this should pop up right here what this tells you right here is basically okay it opened up twice it basically tells you what your system consists of which is very very important for this tutorial now a lot of you guys may be on a laptop which is perfectly fine it just depends on what type of processor that laptop has and also the GPU but this is a quick and easy way to check it out just for comparison sake like my rig isn't anything amazing it's just a basic desktop break for gaming is nothing hardcore or you know like a freaking 4k gaming experience or anything but right here we can see the only things that really matter here is your processor which I have an AMD Ryzen 5 2600 which is also called a six core processor we can see right here that there's 12 CPUs on it basically six physical and then I believe six virtual and they run at an average of about 3.4 gigs or I think 3.4 gigs is a max 3.4 gigs is a max so what you want to do especially if you have a laptop is number one open this up before you even try an emulator and hopefully don't waste your time and see what your computer specs are at is your processor you know at least four cores like preferably a quad core or more I would hope um, two cores do work as well but I would prefer four cores especially for emulators just to make it easier on computer and allow you to do other things other than have the emulator hog up your entire um, CPU but that's my processor right there we can see that I'm at 16 uh, gigs of RAM which is perfectly fine in this day and age 16 gigs of RAM isn't overkill 32 gigabytes of RAM is considered overkill but for those of you guys with a lower end system I personally would prefer you guys to have around 8 gigabytes of RAM in your laptop or desktop if you have 4 you can still do this with 4 are you going to have a good time probably not but at minimum I would say 8 because you're going to dedicate some of your RAM slash memory to the emulator and then the only other tab that really matters here after you've gotten your processor and your RAM amount will be the display as you can see I'm rocking a GTX NVIDIA GTX uh, 1060 6 gigabytes not an amazing card by any means it's, it came out in like 2016 I can game on it just fine in general emulators or just triple A games or whatever it runs perfectly fine but this is where the meat of the problem comes from now if you go to this tab and you don't have like an Nvidia GeForce GTX whatever or you don't have like an AMD Radeon whatever then you might you might be in for a world of pain because nine times out of ten a lot of lap laptops because they are more cheaply made and uh, more expensive to get an actual dedicated GPU will contain integrated cards now you can still game on integrated cards you can still run the emulator on integrated cards is it optimal no will it ever be pretty probably not but it still works but I want you guys just to go ahead and take this up right here that way you just get an idea of what you have and if you're still uncomfortable with what you're running feel free to leave a comment below of you guys telling me your processor and then your card and I can give you more advice uh, as that goes on but let's go ahead and move on to the next part which is my knock setup 
All right, so here's my Nox player. Uh, my Nox player is set at 6.2.83, and I'm ro rocking Android 5 because the only game that I play on it in this current state is just MSL. And for some reason, whenever I update my Nox player, it just it's just a bad time. It's just a bad time. But anyways, we can go over here to the gear right here, and this is your settings for Nox. Now, I don't have anything fancy set up here. I'm just scrolling through. And what you want to do is actually go over here to advanced settings and then performance settings. Now, mine is uh, on the middle, which it should be on, uh, where it takes up two CPUs and then two gigabytes of RAM. That's perfectly fine. Like I said, this Nox player is used only for farming. It's only for performance. I don't want it impacting my PC in any way. Uh, if possible and I just want to run the game and let it play it doesn't have to look pretty and then I also have my resolution set to a custom resolution which you are free to change um, the lower the DPI of your actual emulator the less load it's going to be on your graphics card which is very very important for people with a lower end graphics card so if you have to run it at 150 DPI run it at 150 DPI if you're trying to run a game at like 1080p which is uh, 9 1920 by 1080 Bump the resolution down. Go to 720p. You guys can Google what the resolution of 720p is, which is uh, which I think is like 1024 by 720, or you could do uh, 540p. Just Google the resolution, pop that in here, or actually select it from the slider, and then uh, let it do what it has to do. Especially for lower end cards, I would say first start off with either 720p resolution with your width and height, or go down to maybe 540p with your width and height and see how that goes and keep your DPI at 150. You can do 160 if you want, doesn't really matter. As long as you can run the game, that's pretty much what you're trying to get right here. And then my compatibility mode for my graphics rendering is on OpenGL. You can feel free to test out the other ones as well, but I find OpenGL to be the most stable for me. Frame setting, once again, if your um, rig isn't that powerful, go ahead and try and drop this down to 30 and see how see how well it works. 60 obviously in theory looks better, but I'm not sure if that really makes a big performance difference in my opinion. And then the turn off mouse acceleration in Windows, I, I don't really use that at all. So it's just something that's checked. I believe that's how it came. But I don't think there's anything else here um, that's really important. No, so I would say at, at least make sure you have two dedicated cores, which is why I brought up having a dual core processor. Not really optimal for the situation. A quad core, though, would allow you to allot two cores to the emulator and then allow you to allot two cores to doing other tasks, like if you want to do internet browsing, YouTube, Netflix, etc., without feeling like your CPU is like slogging about. But it all depends on what type of specifications your desktop or your laptop has but that's just my settings for Knox, and it doesn't look pretty by any means but it gets farming down and i have no absolutely no problem with that whatsoever and yep that's pretty much what i use for the next part though we're going to move on to blue stacks where i actually make the games look pretty so i'll catch you guys over there all right so here's my blue stacks player right here once again it has msl because i use one uh, blue sex player for MSL while I use the other ones for playing other mobile games. It just makes it very, very easy, especially when I do account reviews. So I don't have to just like unlink my account on MSL, reinstall it, unlink just everything. It's just, it's just a bad time. So I just keep it separate, especially from doing account reviews because it's nice, fast, easy. I can make a new instance and be done with it. But if we go over here, uh, blue sex is very, very similar to Knox in terms of the user interface but they just have these little folders instead. But if we click these double arrows over here and slide down here to the gear once again, we can go over here to the settings, which you guys can see that mine is set at a landscape resolution. Um, my resolution itself is at 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080. Once again, I had mentioned, uh, actually I was slightly off of that, but 1280 by 720 is actually um, 720p. My DPI is at 240 DPI. I could go to 320 but it doesn't really matter I mean it does matter but it doesn't really matter it's just looks but yep that's my resolution so I am running the game at not running the game but I am running the emulator at um, 1080p which obviously my rig has no problem working with and it actually looks pretty good and if we go over here to engine uh, I am on performance mode not compatibility I don't mess with that um, and then this is on open G OpenGL once again, you can do DirectX, it really depends on your settings, it's something that I would just 
recommend you guys test out and find out on your own. And then for GPU settings, some of you guys might not have this box here because you only have an integrated card, which is understandable. But mine is just saying that uh, prefer that my graphics card does the work for the emulator and not some integrated or onboard card. Then the ASTC texture beta, that's disabled, it doesn't really matter. And for the performance, I allot 4 gigs of RAM to this emulator and also 4 cores. Do I have to do 4 cores? I don't think so, but my computer hands, handles it perfectly fine. It doesn't really take away from my experience if I'm on like Nox at the same time as I'm on Blue Sex. So I'm farming not only on MSL, but maybe I'm playing Bleach or if I'm recording a video at the same time as I'm running MSL like this nature, it doesn't really impact my computer that much because it's not that big of a load especially with the games that I play and I mean you can enable high frame rate but once again mine is just set to 60 it just makes it look smooth and as you guys can see over here in the settings 60 frames per second for smoother gameplay may affect game performance for some entry level PCs aka those of you with a lower system but with those of you with a lower system you can still run the same thing that you can run in Nox if you prefer blue um, the blue sex player instead I do find that blue sex player is more stable especially with video games in general than Knox at least in my opinion does MSL still crash yes does it crash as often no but that's one man's opinion uh, there's plenty of users that use both of these and say that one is just worse than the other and that may be your case and that's okay but I don't think there's anything else here that really matters now because it's all about your display and your engine so to all the boys out there with a great looking PC or a great looking specs in their PC with a beastly processor and a decent dedicated GPU from the last five years you shouldn't have any problems running um, blue stacks or knots at 1080p and as high DPI as possible I don't really see that as an issue and of course you can allot four cores if you have a lot of cores on your machine to do so but to those of you guys with a lower end PC once again I recommend you just Running the emulators at two cores, try and not give it four gigabytes of RAM if you only have four because you're in for a bad, bad time. Give it two if you need it. Obviously, you will need it. So run it at two cores, give it two gigabytes of RAM starting off and tweak your settings after that. And I, once again, I wouldn't start anywhere near 1080p as your first run of a game. I would try it at 720p. If you feel like the game is kind of laggy at that point, drop it down to 540p, drop it down to 480p, and that should be pretty much it in terms of um, the emulator settings. It's very, very simple. Obviously, if you have a dedicated card, it's a lot easier. It's just a more smoother process with the emulators. But, you know, not everyone's fortunate enough to have certain things in life, and not everyone gets to choose what laptop they're given by their parents or what laptop they could purchase at that point in time but we're all gamers just trying to game i mean that's pretty much it i do have one other setting though uh this applies both to desktop users and laptop users all right so we're going to go over here to the windows once again and then we're going to type in power and sleep settings now this right here is 100 percent pog I'm making sure you guys can see this right here. As you guys can see, my computer is set on best performance, obviously because I want the best performance of my of my desktop. And that's something that you guys need to check out because most laptops either come in um, better performance slash balanced, and some some scenarios best energy saving. Which yeah, it cuts down on your uh, electricity bill. But I'm not going to do the math of how much electricity comes out of your bill or raises your bill up from you trying to be a gamer and that's pretty much it there's also additional power settings as well if you want to click on that and as we can see that my PC is on a balance plan which I have no problem with it performs per perfectly fine but if your PC is on a balance plan or power saver um, plan and it's still lagging then what I would recommend is actually going over here and clicking high performance what high performance does is basically allow your computer to draw in as much power as it can and perform as best as it can in a situation where you're trying to run the emulator and it feels kind of sluggish it may just be your computer just down clocking because it's set and balanced or you know it's not really taking advantage of its hardware to its full potential but that's the only tips that I have once again I definitely hope this helped for setting up not only blue stacks or Knox player you guys are free to copy either one of my settings once again if you know your computer is low if you you know look up my specs for my computer and compare it to yours and you already feel like it's lower just do what i have for Knox. 
if you have a beastly PC already, but you're interested in like the uh, the world of emulator gaming for Android games, do the BlueStack settings. Both of them are universal. It doesn't matter if you use the LD player, the whatever player they have out there. They all should work. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I definitely hope it helped. This is a question that I see asked not super often, but when it does, it's kind of hard to help people out when they can't visually see what they're supposed to do. But once again, if you guys like the video, make sure you like it. If you guys have any other suggestions for the things that I do that you're interested in, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.